Manhattan University. And he's, he's going to talk about viruses, viruses by Petronas and Petronas. So you have a Dimitri. No, I will share my screen. Well, yeah. I believe uh, you can see the beginning of my talk. And uh, I'd like to attract your attention to two kinds of models and maybe to uh, come to some generalization of the modeling uh, problems and maybe uh, not only to modeling, but uh, to uh, management of knowledge, uh, which we accumulate in uh, some kind of uh, science. And uh, I'd like uh, to mention, but uh, it is not enough to have one model uh, for, for vector-borne disease, uh, at least, uh, and we need uh, two or more models. At first, we need to uh, specify behavior patterns. We specify uh, this in concurrent uh, process specification uh, using PetriNet uh, language for individual behavior. It is like protocols in uh, telecommunication and I'd like to say that uh, too much information is accumulated in the domain of entomology, in the domain of vector-borne disease, and it is mainly verbal information. And you pass it in this verbal way, and it may be corrupted, uh, some noise may influence it, and usually achievements start when you formalize your specification, your description. So I try to attract your attention that time came, like we were discussing today, time came to apply formal methods. And when you specify uh, behavior of one species of interaction with human being, with other animals, when you specify it, uh, not maybe in deterministic, but in some stochastic model, it will lead you to for a breakthrough in your domain. And the other kind of model, when we study uh, collective behavior and uh, processes in the uh, bulk of population in the herd, herd and this kind of uh, models uh, recently is expressed in cellular automata formalism. But it is not something very new because uh, there is a, a traditional way to come to cellular automata when you have specification uh, CAIR model, for instance, like a system of differential equations, and you start to solve the system of differential equations numerically, you come to uh, numerical scheme. When you calculate uh, state in some point, depending on the state of neighboring uh, points. So it is uh, like, uh, uh, very uh, traditional way to come to cellular automata. So it is uh, uh, a sequence of models and uh, uh, it is not something new because we should preserve uh, that all the models uh, yield the same result to us or at least correlate. First, I'd like to say a few words about PetriNets because uh, they are very convenient to specify uh, concurrent processes. They are applied widely for production processes, for transportation, automated manufacture, uh, in uh, uh, biology as well, for computing grids. And it is a very simple model. Uh, it is bipartite-oriented graph. Uh, which contains uh, dynamical elements called tokens. And tokens are moving as a result of transitions firing. Here, uh, I should show you how we can fire a transition. A transition should have at least one token in its uh, input places. When it fires, it take, uh, takes a token from each input place and puts a token 
in each of its output places. So for, uh, in this slide, we have a sequence of firing transitions and uh, we can have uh, various interpretation. We can uh, think of this net like uh, doing something in manufacture, automated manufacture to assemble some uh, maybe unit of production. We can think about it like something in vector-borne disease. So uh, model is very simple. And because of its simplicity, we have uh, a series of methods to analyze this model. And uh, now let us... Uh, uh, can see that typical uh, behavior patterns, they're characteristic to many animals, insects uh, as well. And uh, uh, they are applicable in other domains, such as the production uh, processes, such uh, as uh, uh, concurrent programming. So we have sequential process when, uh, for instance, mosquito doing something and then something. We have cyclic, cyclic periodic behavior. We can express it in this way, like a cycle. We can have alternative. Uh, and these three blocks are well expressed by traditional flow charts. But flow charts uh, do not contain blocks to specify concurrent behavior. At the bottom, we can see parallel behavior. We can split processes like many, uh, maybe reproduction. We can split processes, but maybe uh, uh, we can join them. There are examples in bi biology or joining to maybe representative or more. So uh, we can specify these kinds of processes and we can create an arbitrary graph, uh, workflow, so-called workflow graph and specify behavior. Let us cast a look I, in this my presentation uh, because uh, I was publishing uh, papers mainly in the domain of uh, high performance computing, uh, uh, telecommunications. I will cite papers uh, from the uh, vector borne disease domain and uh, viruses domains as well. There is this simple scheme uh, what expresses periodic behavior over mosquito, this horse seeking, horse encountered, biting, resting, and ovipositing. And now you can see what uh, rather simple Petri net comes with the mentioned sequence. Here we have the number of tokens corresponding to the number of uh, mosquito in each state. And we can simulate it. Uh, who is interested? I have three simulated systems. If we have time, I can demonstrate them, or maybe after the talk, they are uh, all of them are freely downloadable, so you can start using them. And it is very simple scheme. We can uh, proceed with more uh, sophisticated scheme when we have feeding cycle with a few host types uh, taken from the source number one. And uh, uh, on this scheme, we can present uh, this Petri net for two spaces. Uh, we can put three dots in between to have many of them, or we can have our parametric models to represent uh, many kinds using only one cycle. So we can express in this way, having only input transition, we have express uh, influx of uh, species and here maybe uh, they go out or maybe it is a reduction of the number because of death, uh, uh, many reasons. And uh, besides what PetriNet uh, allows us, we can express interaction. Here we have mosquito and at the bottom we have uh, uh, we have a human being, and here there is interaction uh, biting, which involves two uh, representative a mosquito and the human being. It is a rather simple for slide because uh, we will have more complex slides uh, when uh, we uh, get absorbed in the problematic of uh, petri nets deeply. 
And uh, when we need uh, to specify characteristics, maybe of individual species, maybe of some environment, we come to extensions of Petri net and so-called colored Petri nets uh, is very convenient for specification of uh, sophisticated, sophisticated realistic uh, behavior patterns of uh, insects. And uh, later we will see some models for viruses. Here there is a brief explanation how transition fires in uh, colored Petri net. So we have tokens and each token here is represented like a coin, coin uh, free, uh, coin two, free coins, coin four, two coins, coin five, one. So uh, here there is a number of copies and uh, exact copy. And we take two of them and produce something. As a result, here we, uh, for instance, uh, uh, calculate some of them, but we can apply more complex functions. By the way, our models of telecommunication systems uh, have been approved by the developer of this uh, CPN tools, very simple domain CPN tools or, and I think more than 10 models, one of the most uh, complex models uh, for sophisticated networking technology uh, can be downloaded from this site. And here uh, there is a brief result of our uh, uh, collective uh, joint work with Marcus when we uh, year ago discussed uh, COVID uh, patterns uh, and uh, how, uh, uh, how uh, individuals change their state because of vaccination. Uh, and uh, uh, most of all, we can express relationship between individuals uh, using PetriNet. And uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, using formal models have a series of advantages. Uh, I uh, agree that uh, sometimes uh, direct implementation of agents in software could be efficient, but if we have uh, high performance computers, uh, Sometimes we uh, should prefer models which are easy to develop, to understand, uh, because a model is a kind of knowledge. We should pass this knowledge to uh, maybe next generation of scientists, and uh, uh, it is easier to do using formal approach. And here, uh, together with this specification of the model with functions, uh, we have uh, uh, declaration of data types, data types, for instance, in fact, uh, SEIR and relationship uh, one individual and another Cartesian product. Uh, and here we have a record person, his identifier, his state, age, uh, uh, information of vaccination, birthday, and so on. We can uh, create longer uh, record if required. And for uh, statistical processes, we can have uh, many uh, realistic distribution uh, laws. Here we have Poisson uh, law, and uh, we have a series uh, implemented in CPN tools, and we can implement more if required. Here there is an example how uh, we can uh, do a few steps, for instance, uh, and uh, debug our model. And finally, we can run this model on the prolonged interval of time, a few days, maybe a few years, uh, uh, inserting some intervention, maybe isolation, maybe vaccination and other countermeasures, and uh, estimate their efficiency using modeling on prolonged time. You have many uh, many individuals, it will require supercomputer resources like clusters, but they are available. Uh, and uh, uh, at least in the United States, in Europe, uh, I've, uh, together with my employment uh, at uh, uh, Environmental University, I'm uh, a scientist at Supercomputer Center in Leon, uh, Spain and we can uh, involve their computing resources in Barcelona supercomputing uh, 
center there is one of most powerful uh, supercomputers in Europe. So we can uh, uh, gather gather opportunities to uh, implement full-scale simulation based on this formal method. And uh, another kind of models which I'd like to unite at the end of my talk is cellular automata. As I said uh, at the beginning of my talk, uh, for this domain, they come rather naturally for, from the sequence, uh, from the system of differential equation. But usually they represent a regular grid of uh, cells, each cell uh, dwell in a finite number of states. There is an initial state and the state of all the uh, grid changes simultaneously. It is not necessary there are asynchronous uh, automata as well. And for changing state, there are uh, some rules. They can be very simple, they can be sophisticated, they can be like derived from uh, systems of equations and rules depend on the neighborhood. The neighborhood can be small, can be uh, large. So it is basic ideas. And the simplest cellular automata, uh, which ideas are closely connected with biology was game of uh, life, one of the first automata which is inspired Stephen Wolfram to his book, very interesting book. I recommend it, A New Kind of Science, Voluminous Book on Cellular Automata. And I'd like to demonstrate this animation so um, uh, we can simulate something moving, something disappearing, something uh, emerging. So uh, we can even calculate, uh, compute on the cellular automata. So they behave as simple and powerful. And uh, as for the classification, we can have rectangular, triangular, hexagonal uh, shape of a cell. We can have one dimensional and uh, more number of dimensions uh, for usual simulation uh, for mosquito, for instance, spreading processes two dimensional uh, lattice is applied, synchronous, asynchronous, totalistic, stochastic, and uh, if you'd like, you can find the two add to for name and, and more neighborhood. I offered in my work generalized neighborhood in uh, theoretical computer science paper. And uh, we can express state of cellular automata in the simplest case, uh, like alive and dead for a game of live binary data, integer, real, or it can be a record, uh, complex, uh, uh, not simple data type. This is taken from the source number two, uh, and it is a simulation of uh, chikungunya outbreak and some island, uh, uh, reunion island. And uh, there is a marvelous picture of how this uh, triangular uh, uh, cells uh, are in uh, different state uh, expressed on this screen. And by the way, uh, in the uh, layer uh, uh, at the bottom of this model, we have the system of differential equations for zero model for, for mosquito and uh, for same model for, for human being behavior. And from this uh, system of uh, equation, have uh, description. This description of cellular automata is derived with uh, for name and neighborhood, like. Uh, only connected by sides neighbors. And it is a probabilistic stochastic cellular automata. So there is probabilities for transformation from state to state. Time step one, step one day and the closed boundaries. So there are no neighbors on the boundaries. They are not closed like in torus for rectangular grid, but closed by the maybe the more correct word, uh, they use word in this article closed, but uh, really it can be specified maybe like cut boundary uh, more precisely. And the following transitional rules were derived from the system of uh, uh, ODE, ordinary differential equations uh, for each transition, the number of spaces uh, to change state and the probability for uh, mosquito and for human beings. 
And uh, uh, the final information is rather interesting. Uh, no uh, simulation, no host mobility. It was a position and uh, for, for mosquito and humans uh, were calculated the number of uh, uh, individuals of species in uh, some states. And we can choose optimal parameters for this uh, outcome of simulation. So we use simulation for optimization, like uh, it was said during this uh, meeting for optimal control. To control disease, uh, we uh, estimate efficiency of countermeasures. And when we create a model, we can do it at micro level, when a self, uh, uh, a live cell, or bioplast is uh, uh, represented by a cell, or we can have a macro model as it was uh, in the previous case, geospatial model, when we have uh, amount of population for each cell and change of this amount during the simulation. And in the third uh, source, I'd like to uh, cite this model for uh, immune response to Ebola. There are uh, neighbors with more neighborhood. We have eight neighbors using corners as well. And here uh, is specification how they change their state using this uh, A uh, uh, and uh, A any number and uh, zero, three. We have, uh, in this case, we have zero, one, two, three, four states. And uh, finally, uh, uh, with uh, various parameters, uh, various uh, pictures we obtained here, uh, infection disappears, clears out. For other cases, it spreads and conquers uh, everything. And uh, as a result, uh, the authors derived parameters for inevitable recovery. Now it is represented with this graph. So uh, cellular automata are uh, useful and they are derived from traditional methods. It is very significant. I'd like to show this slide, but we have a union. We have statistical information. I was asking Rudy. We have simulation of big quantity and we have cellular automata model and the parameters of model should be adjusted at each other results and uh, basically the statistical information of real life cases. So we use a system of models. And uh, traditionally people develop multi-layer cellular automata uh, where we can uh, represent host, vector, environment, and even countermeasures. And uh, it is a brief historical remarks to mention first people who applied cellular automata. In this domain, I maybe go briefly, having uh, limited time. And I'd like to uh, cast a look on Las Alamas National Laboratory tools. They use nearly the same, but they apply uh, maybe a bit of different method. They have the DAC-SIM, for behavior pattern simulation agent-based model, but they do not reveal which kind of model, formal model they have behind agent. So we have Petri nets and they have object-oriented platform for spreading infections, so-called OPI, they have uh, previously uh, EPSIM as uh, uh, early variant of this system. So our advances uh, like not, uh, um, maybe completely novel, but they correlate with uh, two uh, approaches in very uh, respectable laboratory, uh, which uh, possess uh, great experience in this domain. And finally, I'd like to see about uh, works which allow us to model cellular automata by PetriNet because I'd like to come to the conclusion that uh, we offer PetriNet and uh, uh, a set of classes of PetriNets as a uniform language for specifying behavior patterns and uh, 
for uh, statistical based simulation because we have model cellular automata using uh, petri nets. It is an example of uh, uh, my paper where uh, it was developed for one dimensional cellular automata. And then maybe this picture, many models are obtained for hexagonal lattices. Here we have an example how this petri net of regular structure, infinite petri net, we model for hexagonal lattice. It is not only picture because behind it, we have this system of infinite uh, Diophantine equations and we developed methods to solve it in parametric form. So having formal methods, uh, having formal specification, we can apply formal methods to draw some results. And uh, uh, now I come to the conclusion. So we specify behavior pattern by petri nets, disease spreading by cellular automata. We adjust parameters uh, using both models and statistical information. And we offer this set of languages as a uniform language to specify, to maybe formalize knowledge in this uh, very interesting, exciting domain to provide how it is uh, maybe in the trend, in trend now uh, to call it reuse of knowledge. So to have ability to take knowledge and apply directly to simulator, behavior pattern, what you investigated, and it will provide uh, uh, more possibilities for research in the world. So we come to this necessity to Formalized because in automated manufacture in the United States of America, they have breakthrough when they started to specify production schemes. Very close to PetriNet languages, I found out that two persons in the United States offered this notation at the beginning of 19th century, before they appeared with this maybe title. So uh, when people started to specify communication protocol, they uh, refined networking technology. So time came to specify your knowledge using some formal language. It is uh, my uh, suggestion for discussion, uh, this kind of languages, because it's from one side it is simple and uh, it is powerful. And we have possibility of uh, to apply formal methods to analyze uh, uh, composed constructed models. So we have do investigation using high, high performance exascale computing to provide complete scale uh, simulation on prolonged intervals of time to uh, uh, long term forecast uh, to optimize. Uh, efficiency of countermeasures. I was using only three external references, but I analyzed more, more very interesting papers in this uh, domain. These are very interesting. And uh, I also uh, would like to invite your attention to our papers on Infinite PetriNet. They are open papers uh, and there are papers uh, on simulation using colored petri nets, uh, on generalized neighborhood for cellular automata, and on simulation of uh, cellular automata by petri nets. And finally, I'd like to show this net of rectangular grid. And uh, maybe if you got uh, interested with something, you can find more information on my website where I put my papers, uh, models, uh, so software, at least reference to software. If uh, you cannot get some paper because of uh, journal restriction, please write me a mail. I, uh, it is not prohibited to send uh, the paper in direct communication. So thank you for your attention. And your questions are welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much. Dimitri. It, it was very, very interesting. Uh, all the, the presentation. And, and we, we have a question, question from the public. public. Uh, the question will be, how do you differentiate
between the species on your cellular and automata model. So it's so 350,500 species. species. How do you do this in the model? model we can uh, adjust them using the different values of parameters because uh, when we cast a look uh, maybe i should switch uh, to my presentation once more when we cast uh, a look uh, uh, to the model in the uh, like beginning of from where we came to solar automaton we have parameters here uh, and adjusting these parameters with uh, behavior peculiarities for species of mosquito, we can uh, get it adjusted, uh, like fine-tuned, uh, people say. And if difference is essential, maybe we should have uh, different systems of equation and uh, cellular automata will be not the same uh, for various species. Okay, thank you. Also, payment has, a, has raised your hand. Maybe you can unlock your micro. Yes, I um, I have a question to Dimitri. I mean, um, we, we know for uh, realistic uh, simulations of spreading of diseases, we need more parameters, like for instance, the health condition of the people, the age. Uh, behavior of people and so on. Do you do you think we can use these um, ideas of the colored uh, petri uh, net uh, to uh, understand this kind of simulations? For sure, we can use uh, colored petri net, uh, uh, but uh, there is uh, one more for. One more point of view of, uh, on the modeling process, because uh, usually a model is a state of art balance, balance between simplicity and usefulness. If you have simple, very simple model, it, it cannot be useful, but very sophisticated model will give you no opportunity to provide uh, real scale simulation, even having big computing resources. And there is another point uh, when you will have plenty of parameters. Uh, from statistical point of view, it will be very uh, sophisticated task to adjust to uh, find out uh, mutual correlation. So uh, usually, uh, if you'd like to have model, there is a, a difference uh, between specification of something specification and modeling using when you specify behavior pattern maybe it will be more detailed when you'd like to provide simulation using uh, a few millions of uh, greater number of species you need to uh, simplify more mm. so uh, for modeling maybe for specification we can have many parameters and colored petri net up uh, very useful but uh, finally, uh, my third paper I cited uh, of American uh, scientists uh, uh, is very interesting because they simplified model and uh, it allowed them to obtain analytic solution. Sometimes when you uh, do this kind of thing, analytic solution is very useful uh, to check your uh, results of simulation. And uh, maybe you can directly apply it in some cases. So it's marvelous when we can obtain good enough analytical solution, maybe for not uh, too much detailed model. And we will use it uh, comparing with the simulation results. So we should have balance between description and uh, like modeling in our task. Thank you very much for your question. Thank okay. you. I think Marcos has a question. Uh, hello, uh, very interesting uh, talk. And uh, we have been discussing um, uh, using uh, the use of Petrinet before. Uh, but uh, one of the slides at the end of your talk showed uh, that uh, you are 
considering alternative connections between um, the, the individual theta models. Oh. Um, and uh, you, you suggested using a, a hexagonal uh, grid for the cellular automaton. Uh, my question is uh, because uh, as a model of, of a population, it is not important for me if it is a, um, a rectangular grid or a hexagonal grid, but usually the, the connections between individuals in the population are uh, highly heterogeneous. Children have different contacts in schools. We have families, we have workplaces, things like that. Uh, how do, uh, do you think it would be possible to make, uh, to, to use the cellular automata approach for a modeling of a more uh, human-like um, uh, um, network, um, or is this uh, opposite to the approach that you, you want to analyze it? I, I understand that we can analyze a, a regular network, but the human network is usually a heterogeneous network. What can we do here? Thank you for your nice question, uh, dear Marcus. And, uh, I'd like to say that your question uh, brings uh, in uh, like hybrid models, because when we simulate, uh, it is development of uh, uh, my offer to have a uniform language. When we specified cellular automata by a Petri net, we can uh, bring in some irregularity in this model. We can specify like binary relations, uh, and relations which are not regular in this grid. In um, my example, uh, in one of the slides, uh, there was a colored Petri net model when uh, relation was expressed as a Cartesian product. Like one uh, uh, individual has relation with another with a certain number. We can create, uh, uh, like when we have big model with many uh, individuals, the problem also is to generate initial data. Initial data, and we should do it in a random way, use statistical information on the uh, frequency of relations and generate uh, initial data. E this problem was not touched in my talk, but it is a certain problem. So having a uniform language, we, should, uh, we can have hybrid model, and we can specify more than we can specify unusual cellular automata. As for the shape, uh, for the shape of a cell, uh, it was uh, very uh, uh, marvelous for me because uh, in telecommunications, we were using three kinds of uh, this regular uh, grid, uh, triangle for radio connection, maybe many radio uh, broadcasting <coughs> use this triangular grid and uh, for, for communication and computing grid, we have, computing grids, we have rectangular grid, and for cellular network and other application, we have hexagonal grid. And when I started to analyze paper for modeling spreading of disease and spreading of insects, uh, they were using these mentioned three kinds uh, for, for various applications. So for one application, uh, triangular grid works better. Maybe for another hexagonal, so they uh, select, they choose uh, an optimal variant and they use uh, three of them, uh, like in many works, and three of them are applicable. 